Welcome to Ragnar Riders Shop Talk, the ultimate pit stop for all things two-wheeled and roaring. We are mostly ordinary guys who live and breathe the motorcycle lifestyle. From our personal journeys to gripping product and accessory reviews, bike builds that redefine the road, the latest industry buzz, and a sneak peek into our future travels, consider this your front row seat to our motorcycling odyssey. So kick back, relax, and let the engines roar as we dive deep into the world of chrome, leather, and the sweet symphony of the open highway. Welcome to Ragnar Riders Shop Talk, where the rubber meets the road and the stories unfold in the wind. Good day and welcome back to Shop Talk with the Ragnar Riders. I'm DJ Seeley. I got my good buddy, Big John Woody with me and Randy B. That would be me again. What's up, everybody? We are uh, hyped, getting ready for Daytona coming up. I uh, got some some interviews lined up for y'all that I think will be super interesting. Uh, I hope y'all been following along in our podcast so far. I got something that I want to talk about today that I think uh, will be pretty interesting and lead into a little bit about us. Uh, but John, I want to pose a question. If you were talking to a new rider right now, let's just say. Uh, I'll give you a scenario. You're you're walking out of Sunday school. Somebody catches you and says, "Hey, man, I, I saw you ride up today on that motorcycle. I've been thinking about getting a motorcycle. What do you think I ought to get?" Huh. Well, I'd have to ask. I'd have to follow with a bunch of questions. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to give an answer straight off that. I would have to ask a bunch of clarification questions. And I actually, had that happened to me uh, just about five months ago. Um, uh, and the first question I had is, well, what kind of riding do you want to do? Are you looking for afternoon cruising? Are you looking for sport, adventure? I mean, there's all kinds of different categories. Um, and, of course, that individual is like, you know, I kind of just want that classic Harley look. Now now I'm talking, you know, soft tail heritage. I'm just talking Road King. and the ST. Touring bike. No. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it, Based off giving some some Q and A back to them, I was able to figure out what their interests are and kind of steer them down there. But there's so many different aspirations. I can think of one gentleman um, that was probably a couple of years ago. He had been in the sport bike world, but he wanted to step over into Harley's, and I think he went with um, one of the new uh, Nightsters uh, platform okay. as a transition. So. It really just depends on what they're looking at, and sometimes it's the kind of ride. For some people, it's the look, I mean, to be honest with yeah. you. So uh, I would have to answer the question with, with questions. Question. Yeah. yeah, sure. I, I'm with you 100% there. I guess, uh, what would you start on, Randy? So uh, I, I want to back up and say I, I'm a new rider, and by that, like, I, I've not ridden a motorcycle. I think you look cool coming in. I want to do what you do, but I'm a new rider. Where am I starting? Um, well, I, I had dirt bikes, you know, so, you know, uh, um, 75s, 85s, you know, when I was little. Um, yeah. So like a bike, and of course, before that, it was bicycles in the backyard, building homemade ramps and jumping them and going home to mom with a broke finger or, you know, skint up, just so... You know, entered into the world of two wheels really unafraid, uh, which was dangerous to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a different respect. I think the absenteeism or the, being absent from uh, two wheels for many years um, and growing older, uh, I definitely did not approach them the same as I did in my early years because I, I just rode like I rode a bicycle and did some of the things that we did with bicycles. and. Yeah. But, um, you know, a, a 17, 18, 19 year old, a young adult, got a job, wanted a motorcycle. I remember, uh, you know, first one was a KZ650. Um, it was a fun bike. Um, back then, it was more practical than for fun. I mean, we went to Thunder Beach and, and, and you know, rode around some, but I needed something to get me back and forth to work that got good gas mileage, and a motorcycle was... So I'm not familiar so, with that. Is that more of a cruiser, or is it more of a sport bike? Or? It's probably a cruiser, yeah. Okay. I mean, um, maybe a mix, would you say, John? Maybe a mix. You know, you had the Yamaha and the, the Kawasaki's that had the 650s and, like, 750s, I think, and then it got into... 
a thousand and thirteen fifty somewhere along there. They, they they got bigger, but they they weren't baggers. They weren't like what we know today as mm-hmm. bagger motorcycles. So they were. Um, that would be the Nightsters, the 883s. That would be the comparable Harley okay. versions of those bikes. So, John, when we first Street met, bikes. you had a, uh, I remember it pretty distinctly because I'd been looking at the bike. Um, you were not at home. I was at your house and, and walked around the house, and there sits a, a was a 100th, 100th anniversary. That's a mouthful. Wide Glide, right? Mm-hmm. Did you have bikes prior to that? I did not. That was my first bike. First bike is a Dyna Wide Glide. Mm-hmm. Wow, sweet. So would you say that was a good bike to start on? It, it was a fair bike to start on. But okay. I, I, kind of to your point, I'll go ahead and jump to the answer, I think, is that, that that was the bike image that I knew I always wanted. Uh-huh. And so... So you bought an image, not necessarily a... St- style per se or whatever the end you I would say maybe just after dreaming of it for so long the style mm-hmm. form to the image of, of the type of riding that I wanted to do and the buddies that I had that rode at the time um, you know I bought that bike while I was actually deployed overseas with military um, and there was just happened to be the 100th anniversary year and then you know bought it had it shipped to the local dealer and then when I got back home after deployment it was waiting on me and of course went through and did the MSF courses, and I remember the pulling out of the the old riders location in Trustville on Highway 11, thinking, "What have I done?" <laughs> Making that first turn. Hey, you had a long ride home. <laughs> I did have a long ride home. <laughs> yeah, I took a lot of back roads really slow, but no, um, I love that bike. Uh, with my age at the time, uh, mid, I guess I was mid late 20s at the time. Um, that was, uh, I had a lot of fun on that bike. A lot of good memories, and it. Yeah. it it really met my needs. Now, then when I got further in the dating relationship and, you know, I think I referred to in a previous episode, Mama, that I'm now married to, had a, a two-hour limit on that, yeah. that pillion. Um, right. uh, you know, and she said then, all right, you, you're going to have to upgrade on your next bike and say, well, I'll go to a Road King, you know, because I still wanted that look and uh-huh. that kind of bar hopper look. But now you can see, I'm, I, you know, we've talked about I'm in an ultra limited. Yeah. I don't regret that either. But. So you, you played into that exactly like I was hoping you would have and, and that you bought an image. Yeah. Because I think I was 100% guilty of that myself. You know, I, I went 40 years of my life without a motorcycle. Uh, I, I very, very little experience riding. I mean, I had a couple of buddies that had some dirt bikes that I might have jumped on and rode across a football field type scenario, mm-hmm. right? Just just take it across the pasture one time, you know. You, you don't first. learn anything about riding in that situation. No. Uh, but I had an image of what I wanted, and I had ideas in my head of what I wanted to do and what I saw myself doing, and that was touring. Yeah. It, it, it was me and Allison getting on the bike, and heading down the road, and, and, and we're traveling, and we're going places. I walk into the dealership. First bike, ultra limited. Big mistake. Big mistake. Uh, and so, if I had a guy coming to me now saying, "Hey, you, you know, I saw you pull in. You know, you looked all cool. I want that. Don't do it." Yeah, it would be my recommendation. Start somewhere else. Um, and I wish I would have. I'd probably be a little farther along in my my, I guess, riding aptitude or career now had I done something different. But uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about was, was what, you would, what you would lead somebody towards. Is it a Harley? Do you, do you say a first bike being, I mean, what's our entry level now at, at Harley? If you say the entry bike, I don't even know that the Sportster, certainly not the Sportster S is entry level. I mean, that's a fast bike. Yeah, I would say your 883 or your, you know. Which they don't like, make anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. But. That, that used to new, be my go-to, you, yeah. maybe an 883. Yeah. But that's still a heavy bike. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know that Harley's got anything in their platform right now that I would say this is a beginner bike. Yeah, I don't. they don't even make the street yeah, 750. I guess the Nightster would probably be the closest thing. Yeah. you know. And then not only that, you're looking at a price point that's, what, 13.9 now on the Nightster? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it, and it's going to take a hit. Yeah. Like those things don't bring great money on the resale. So, no, they don't. Uh, you know, I, I've got somebody I've been watching on Facebook trying to unload an 883 for like $11,000. It was $11,000 new. 
now it's used. It's well, he put a cam in it and put it, something on it. Well, something. maybe something, but I mean, that's what everybody thinks. But anyway, yeah, you know, uh, his offers are six, seven thousand dollars. Easily, you know, so you're going to take a hit on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would steer somebody that direction. I think there's uh, probably going to some sort of metric if you want a cruiser. I think there's some, you know, two, three, five thousand dollar Facebook Marketplace bikes out there that I would strongly encourage somebody to go to. So you are just talking about image. So, you know, and I think I think you have, there's a couple of images in the Harley world, and one is that what you talked about with your wife, you get kind of that biker, and you and I spoke this the other day, that, that biker scene, you know, like out of the movie uh, Wild Hogs. You know, you've got, uh, you know, the professionals that are riding their motorcycles and, and Tim Allen and John Travolta and that group. But then they go past that biker bar, mm -hmm. you know, out the, on the road all by itself somewhere that they accidentally or on purposely burned down. And those were bikers. There was no baggers in that group. There was no, you know, that, that was that one group. And then you've got the, the touring group. All right. So you take those two and kind of set them aside. And then outside of that, really what you've got is your, your crotch rocket folks. You know, and, and that's a whole different lineup. So if somebody comes to me at the age of 19 and 20 and says, hey, I want to learn to ride, a lot of them have that in the back of their head because that's what a lot of the young world is, is doing today. You know, so if they're saying, hey, what kind of crotch rocket do I buy? I'm, saying, I'm raising my hand and go, well, I'm out because I know something about them a little bit, but I don't know enough to give any recommendations. So are you wanting to... You know, do the biker world? Are you wanting to do the Harley or the V Max or the the street bike? Or are you wanting to, you know, do 140 down the highway as a normal speed? And so, back to kind of gets to your point. You know, as a brand new rider, um, I think there's a couple of factors that the Q and A session. Um, you know, part of it is I'm gonna look at their physical stature. I think physical size is a part of it because okay, maybe maybe because of their experience. I'm saying, hey, you probably need to start out on 250 Rebel, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're not going to be comfortable on that, and, and they're they're going to out they're outgrown that bike first time they leg over it. Oh uh, no, yeah, no, you're and absolutely so, right. So, is there a balance of is their physical stature that okay? Maybe a 600 plus plus pound bike, okay, it's heavy for them to get, learn on, but is the center of gravity low like a Heritage Softail to where, mm -hmm. okay, maybe it is a little bit heavier than a Honda Rebel 250, but with a low CG, it's very manageable. And because if they're sitting there 6'2", you know, 215 plus, that's really not going to be that heavy to manage. Um, you know, but I do think that if you're looking at, a, you know, a, a smaller stature or a 17 or whatever, you know, I don't I don't know that uh, a lot of the metric, you ref, 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 excuse me, reference the a metric bike with some options of, maybe a 600 motor or, or less wouldn't be a bad option, you know, and then actually there's some states that have limitations on the first year of what size you can ride. So. Yeah, I, I think for me, what I would want to drive across to, to whoever I'm talking to, that's an inexperienced rider. There's some exceptions. If, if you've been running motocross for years and you want to get on a bike, we, we can probably have a different conversation than where I'm sure. fixing to go with this. But if you've never been on a motorcycle before, this is all new to you, uh, I think making them understand that there can be a progression yeah. is important. I didn't have that. I, I walked in, I talked to a salesman, I told him that I wanted to, you know, what the image I had for myself, Your dream. my dream, and he points me to the, the biggest, heaviest bagger that's made and said, oh, this is the king of kings right here. Sign me up. 2.9%. Yeah. Got it. You know, and, and that's, that's what we walked away with. But, you know, talk to somebody a few weeks later and they're like, you did what? Mm -hmm. and, and they were trying to inform me that, you know, your first bike doesn't have to be your last bike. <laughs> that's right. I was like, well, hey, but I want it to be. <laughs> but that's what I wanted. Uh, uh, but it bit me in the butt. And, and you know, the, 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 there's a long story. Ended up dropping it. I broke my leg and had to kind of start over and relearn how to ride. And took that path. Mm -hmm. I went back, y'all. Uh, I, I knew that I had taken the MSF course. I said, okay, a after I healed, you know, we're, we're months down the road. I said, okay, I'm going to take the MSF course again. And took it again. And I said, okay, I I'm used to driving this little street bike. 
uh, Harley's little street that they had for years and ended up buying one of those. Uh, and, and what I think I wrote it to, to the Dollar General that's like five miles down the house, like twice, and said, nah, I, I'm good. Uh, we, we can are, move on from this. We are good it to was go. time to progress, right? Ten miles on it. And uh, actually ended up selling it to John. He started his son on it. I, I, I think it was perfect for that. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, he put about 2,000 miles on it, and then we upgraded him because he's 6'2". You know, yeah, two yeah he's, he's not a small boy. Uh, but then I went to the soft tail, the Heritage. Loved the Heritage. Uh, I, did you ever ride the Heritage? Mm-mm. You owe it to yourself to go ride the Heritage. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard they were fun to ride. I would, uh, I mean, I've not been on a lot of Harleys, but I've been on a few, and I would, that was a smooth running, riding, easy, just cruiser bike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've since gotten rid of it, but uh, hope to have another one. I mean, it's on my list put back in stable. Uh, but I, I progressed from it to, the road glide, and then back to the ultra limited, and, and you know, I, sure, I've still got some learning to do, but I, I manage and get around just fine, I think, for the most part. Uh, but I, that that was kind of what I wanted to drive home was that progression. Do you think that Harley offers something in their platform for somebody to start with? I think, um, Randy, you mentioned the sport bikes. I don't think there's anything wrong with telling somebody. If you want a sport bike, I don't have anything against sport bikes. I want no. one. Um, I, I hope one day to have a Ducati, but mm-hmm. um, it's just kind of down my list of my wants right now. But telling somebody to start on, what do they got, a Ninja 300? Yeah. Uh, small one? Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be reluctant to tell somebody to start on that. No, no, it, it's, a, it's a little different world, but, you know, it, it's the functionality of it and the practicality of it is still the same. I mean, you know, you two wheels and, you know, you, 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 you know, uh, uh, learn to ride it's it's definitely um what would you say about 600 pounds lighter than <laughs> than what we you know uh, currently ride um but yeah i don't i would like to have one I, you know i've i've looked at them uh, um i will continue to look at them maybe one day mm-hmm. um uh, yeah I'm, I'm 56 but i still get that wild hair and i would be afraid uh, right now that i might a little too much, so I'm holding off. <laughs> yeah, but, but there's, yes, there's other options beyond just the sport bike and a smaller platform, smaller engine, lighter weight. Yeah. and I think used to and Randy, you may know, Yamaha made a, a YJ. It was basically a Euro Tour, mm-hmm. and you know, obviously you get a bigger engine in it. But I want to say at one time they made a th- 250 to 500 engine size and. You know, really, for somebody that's not really sure what kind of style they're looking at, they just want to get into riding. You know, something that's in that middle of the road, mm-hmm. adventure, touring, sport, little bit of it all. There's there's options out there for that 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 uh, be great beginner bikes. Yeah, there is, and I, I think that, uh, and I know this is going to sound probably a little bit um, odd, and you guys may completely disagree, and I think that's that's fine because we've done that before too. But <laughs> um, uh, you know. My son came to me one time last year and said, I, I'd want to learn to ride. Uh, his mom nicks that in the, in the bud. But um, I told him, I said, well, if you do, then he hadn't ridden a bicycle in a long time. I said, we're going to buy a bicycle. And uh, I'll set you a criteria and a, you will ride this bicycle every day. You're going to put some miles on it. And then we'll do some things with it and uh, put you in situation. And, uh, you know, we'll, that's how we'll learn to ride. Well, he didn't think that was too fun. Uh, we never got to that point because, like I said, mom, mom cut that out. But I'm telling you, if you do really have sincere to ride, uh, and it's been a while since you've been on a bicycle, get a bicycle. Ride a bicycle. Yeah. You know, Eli, your son, used to come by the house, and he put miles and miles oh, yeah. and miles on that bicycle. You see him come around there, and the kids in the neighborhood did too. So, yeah, so what Randy's the same concept, to- the same. Eli was a big mountain biker. I mean, he rode his mountain bike all the time. And so when he decided he wanted to ride, he went through the MSF. And it was, a, of course, they were on the, the street 500 through a right. local Harley dealership. But it was really an easy transition, you know, in that just for an example, you don't have to explain to him what counter steer is. Mm-hmm. That's you right. Know, he he already understands that concept. So. You pull, you push. Yeah. You, you he may not know the terminology, but yeah, right. he understands the principle. That's so right. there, you didn't have to have that PowerPoint slide of your Friday night 
four hour lecture, uh, this is what counter steer is, That's you right. know, because he already had that feel. And so he jumped right into it. And, uh, you know, they do some kind of grading system. I think he ended up graduating top of his class, whatever that means. But, you know, he jumped out right out there riding with us on that street 750 that you had that I bought from you for right. him. Um, and like day one, I was like, wow. Uh, he, he's, you know, I was more, I was very confident in his abilities, just not his situational awareness at that point of yeah. the other riders and other vehicles. But well, at that point, it's not keeping it up; it's learning the throttle. And mm. Because obviously, now we've got something that don't have two pedals; it's got a lot of power behind it. So, yeah, you know. But I mean, that's kind of what we're here for, right? I mean, we've started this. This was our goal: was to talk to people who, you know, were greener than us and try to help them along the way and I think it's a great topic that being able to say you know don't don't be afraid to start somewhere where you feel like that you're too good for if that's the case Uh, because um, the whole concept of and I remember as as a kid used to talk about jumping the ramps and stuff we used to do the same thing on the bicycle that be the boss of your motorcycle guy does Mm -hmm. like we would walk it yeah yeah you know, turn the to the left, turning it to the right. Mm-hmm. And we we hopped it, walked it. I wouldn't do that to that 950 pound bike I ride now, but that's what he does because he's been doing it for decades. But as a bicycle rider, back when I was a kid, we used to do that all the time. It was not uncommon. Uh, so learn to really man- get in a situation where you fall over. You know, just what, and then see what you did wrong, and then go to if you have the ability. DJ, great point, like legit. If you have the ability, go bicycle, a dirt bike, because you can crash in the dirt and everything. <laughs> you know, you're not, you can, you can live to ride another, you know, move it on up gradually, whether it's a sport bike, a small whatever, and then in a year, two, three, four, five, whatever that is and money allows, and, you know, find yourself one day on that dream. Mm-hmm. But my God, don't, don't, don't be afraid to walk it up in phases. It's just not worth. Look, we get on these things every single day that we get on them. We know that there's a risk, and there is. I don't shy away from telling my wife when I leave by myself that, hey, just in case, well, I don't want to hear it. Well, you're going to it because we don't know. Mm-hmm. I've already had a wreck in mind. You guys know the story, and uh, it, I did nothing wrong. It wasn't my fault, uh, and a lot of that happens. Mm-hmm. So get confident in all the things you can do up until the point where you're ready to say, you know what, now I'm going to spend 20, 25, 30, 40, whatever thousand on a bike. I think a point that I want to foot stomp and emphasize, and you and I already referred to it, but I, I want to go back just for a moment and just really drive this home. Whether it's an MSF course through your local Harley-Davidson dealership or your local state DOT or whatever the program is, go to MSF. Google it, find out where locations are, sign up for the beginner's course. And Mm -hmm. and do that really even before you decide what kind of bike you want to do um, or you want to eventually purchase because you may learn something about yourself through that course that may steer you in a different direction than what the look you were looking for. Or Um, away from it, period. Or away from it, period. Which could say that. I mean, you know, a lot of these, there's, obviously there's funding in different states and everything, but I mean, that's, Probably what is it three hundred ish dollars? Three four hundred. If you're looking yeah. to get in the motorcycle yeah. world, that is money well spent. Money well spent in I any agree. regard. See, I didn't have that, and and I don't know if you did in your early days. I don't know I when did. they started all that. Uh, maybe they did. I just didn't have access to know where, well, when, said, and what. But I had to have it to be able to drive on base, so I had to go. So you it. that case, yeah. but you know, I'm country boy. I, I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff, and dealerships like they are today were not plenteous, so mm-hmm. there was no way to have access to it, but I support that absolutely 100%. If you've got access to any kind of training or if you've got somebody that, you know, that's a seasoned rider that can, you know, pull you aside, get you in a parking lot somewhere with a small bike, yeah. somehow get some experience. And well, some the advice. good thing is with them is that you're using, in the beginner's course, Yeah, you're using their bikes. That's right. And they've got engine crash bars that stick out an extra 12 inches so that if you do drop it, I mean, it's literally just, teeter it right back up. Sure. Sure. I mean, and it's somebody else's problem if it does go down hard or whatever. Um, but that just, I can't foot stomp that enough. That's start there. Yep. Yeah. I Look, we, we love riding. We, we love going to the rallies. We love hanging out the day trips, the, 
uh, everything that comes along with it, I wouldn't trade for the world. The, the friendships we, we've uh, amongst us, amongst people outside this circle, um, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but it, had I not had the ability to carry on, after I dropped my bike and broke my leg and, and that scared my wife to death, um, how quickly that happened. Mm -hmm. um, it really discouraged her. Had I not been in a position where I could have kept that, where I kept that bike, I was able to just park it and say, you know what, now's not the right time for this. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, you know, we were all in. I, I, don't, I don't dabble in things. So when, when we decided we were buying the bike, it was, okay, we want the leathers, we want the helmets, we want the comm units, we want all the things. I'm thousands of dollars into this. Uh, you know, 20 grand easy and, and bike and gear and things like that. So uh, it, it would have been terrible if, if that had been the end of my road, yeah. like for motorcycling. If that had just been, well, I tried it, that didn't work out. Uh, yep. Oh, well. Uh, luckily, I was able to, to park that bike. I ended up buying a trike. Uh, and I, I, I like the trike. Me and my wife had a, a ton of fun on it. We've put, I don't know, 15,000 and some change miles on it, you know, weekend getaways and, and road trips and, and had a blast on it. Still got it, still plan to keep it and, and put lots more miles on it. But I was able to, you know, keep all my gear, put it to use and then buy another bike much smaller bike to kind of work back up to the ultra limited right. to get to where we're at today. But not everybody's got that luxury. Uh, like I said, I, I'm blessed to have been able to do that, but I would hate to urge somebody to go down that road with the potential of that happening to them. Right. You know, uh, I agree. there's uh, Randy mentioned dirt bikes. I, I should have probably started with a dirt bike got off the road somewhere, logged some miles, uh, I was with a, another friend of ours the other day whose name will, shall remain nameless um, because we, we were looking at bikes. And his, <laughs> his wife, Kim, may not appreciate knowing that he was looking at bikes. <laughs> well, we're not going to tell you who you are. <laughs> wink, wink. But uh, we, we were looking at adventure bikes. Some of you may, uh, may have picked up on social media. I just bought the GS. I uh, love that bike. We'll, we'll talk about it here He's in a few minutes. He's got three Harleys for sale. No, you know. not yet. <laughs> not yet. But, uh, you know, there's some adventure bikes out there that are uh, lower CCs that are very maneuverable, lightweight, that you can get out on the road on. And then that would be a bike that, you know, if you wanted to add a big cruiser later on, you wouldn't necessarily have to replace one for the other and take that big hit. It right. would just be a different purpose bike. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I wouldn't discourage somebody from looking at something like that. Uh, you know, a KTM 890 or something that's yep. lighter weight, uh, you know, less power than a, a 2000cc Harley. Um, I mean, it doesn't take. Um, when you're talking about the weight of motorcycles, you go all the way from Harleys to Indians to. You know, to go wing to you know, all, I mean, those are just big bikes. Um, and we've talked about the whole rally thing. And you go to rallies and you see all kind. I mean, you just really do. You, all the way from the uh, you know sports, which I call them crotch rockets, but you see, you know, all, all variety of bikes. So you have choices. Uh, to emphasize the words of my parents when I was young, make good ones. Yeah. Make good choices. Yeah. Make, you know, be wise in your decision um, uh, and, and just know that uh, your first bike doesn't have to be your last doesn't one. Doesn't have you to know. be your last one. Learn on it, collect, push that one aside and move up and before long you'll have four or five in your garage. Yeah. Or, I could start a small you know, dealership. You could, you could. <laughs> that, that, may be a, that may be a YouTube video before long, I don't know. They, well, uh, yeah. What's interesting, and I just I happened to catch in my YouTube watching in my spare time, an advertisement for a bike manufacturer that I'd never heard of before, but there's there's a lot of, uh, you're seeing a movement with a lot of what I would call throwback bikes. And they are the smaller, um, I don't know what style to describe it, but these look like the old, old, old school Harleys, like 
early years Harleys. I think it was a uh, company called uh, Janus, J-A-N-U-S. Now, granted, that particular, when you start looking into it, they're a little expensive for what you get because you're paying for a lot of quality and, and mm -hmm. paint and everything. But you, I think you're starting to see a lot of that kind of come back to where, you know, that may be another option where, I mean, you're probably looking at a bike that weighs, I don't know, less than 250 pounds or something. It's really? Of, yeah, it's, they're small. I mean, think old, old school Harleys, and that's what the Jesus, J Janus um uh, that's what like. they look. I mean, it's you might be got a one gallon tank on it. I mean, it's wow. a single piston engine. Going They're to subway really cool. and coming back home. Going yeah, to yeah. I mean, but you know, it's basically a, a, a bicycle with an engine on it. I mean, so let me. Say, okay, so I'm listening to that statement. I listen to all of our conversation right here. Let me throw this out there. An electric bike to start with. A lot of push for that these days. Uh, I mean, they're not heavy. I mean, you you can get them heavier, light. but I mean, I, but the CG on, on it, you know, we talked about that earlier because mm -hmm. of where the battery's located. I'm not going to say that that's a bad idea, but they're not light. I mean, uh, uh, the Harley Livewire is, uh, I, I don't know, you can probably Google how much that weighs, but it's not a, no, it's I, not I, a light, not saying it wouldn't be a decent beginner bike, um, but it, it's not a light bike either. But there's other options out there that are not yeah, as heavy there, as the yeah, bike they are. bar. There are, I'm um, sure. And there's another company that's about to just come out that I think has got an introductory price of like $12,000 for mm -hmm. uh, uh, an all-electric bike that has a range of like 250 miles. You know, Is it zero? I don't think it Zero is. is a big electric bike. 562 pounds. Yeah. So that's, is the live wire. So, yeah, I mean, it's... That's almost yeah, that's soft tail weight. Yeah, soft tail. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, but the it's sale you know, not bad for. Uh, I don't think it would be impossible for somebody to start on. Uh, that's. I think that's a size thing. You know, if if she or he, you know, walks up and they're you know five foot one to five foot five, then that's still a heavy bike. That's still a heavy bike. And mm -hmm. your your CG or your your center of gravity yeah. is is low, so you need something that. I mean, you guys know when we first started riding together and I had just got back into it that that was one of the things that I had to adjust on my bikes, doing some air rides, some other stuff, was I wanted to be sure-footed when I came into parking lots. And I'm I'm 5'8", pushing 5'9", maybe on a good day, 5'10", used to be. I think you shrink as you get older. <laughs> maybe I was 5'11", in my mind, in my dream, you know. Uh, but, <laughs> I, you know, it was just it was something that I felt like I needed to do because, you know, I'm not a tall guy. So, yeah. Uh, that has to be taken. Weight is big, but I mean today because I've got everything, uh, I guess, fixed to where I can do it. I manage a 900-pound bike pretty well. I mean, if it lays over, it lays over, I and mean, that's that's what. Well, they, eventually, they with more from, experience, so. you're going to grow to where I mean, you, you handle any weight and size bike, right? Um, you know, but I, I think starting off, finding something that is lighter weight, lower CG. In the Harley world, I keep going back to the Heritage Softail, but it really just is a very well balanced bike for a beginner. But Walmart there's other options. Mongoose. Uh, yeah, Walmart <laughs> Mongoose, yeah. <laughs> but let's not take power out of that conversation either, though. I mean, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I mean, you got to respect power. The the Heritage is, uh, is it a 114 or 117 this year? I'm pretty sure it's 114. I, think, so. I think they kept the 114s in those. Uh, yeah. well, it's, that's. But still, you're producing 100 and, or what? 80 -ish. about 80 to 90 horsepower yeah but i mean the torque is good so you hit that throttle it's moving yeah yeah and so to, to my point is yeah. you don't want somebody inexperienced that mm -hmm. uh, you know is unsure about do i need first gear second gear half throttle full throttle right. whatever because 114 heritage will move on down the road you if know what to if you really want to, and, and uh, y'all may disagree with this, and, and, and I'll, I'll take it if you, if you want to blast me for saying it, but I do it, I, 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 do, I do it because I've been in it. I've been in one already, uh, two, one years ago, minor. I, I go to, you, to Instagram, YouTube, whatever, and I'll look up, you know, um, you know uh, the, what is it, Motorcycle Craze one, is one of the uh, locations that you can find where they... Where they crash them, where they wreck, have wrecks. And and just look at how it go. You know, listen, a lot of them will talk about what went wrong, what happened. And you'll find out that a lot of them, if it scares you off from it, I'll say thumbs up. If it scares you off from riding, that means that maybe you weren't 
ready to go anyway. So thumbs up to that. If it doesn't scare you off, then, then that means you know the risks and then you can start your learning process. But a lot of these people will tell you they're, they're doing you know stunts and it's all throttle and power related. They've cammed these bikes to do certain things or you know they're horsepower sport bikes that'll do 225 on the highway kind of things. And it, it may give you some things to know what not to do when you get on a motorcycle. We're trying to tell you some things to do. Take courses, buy small bikes, that might show you some things not to do. Don't get on and be evil can evil. For you uh, younger folks, that's a guy that used to jump Grand Canyon stuff. So. <laughs> well, and that was a fear that I had with my son because, yep. like you mentioned earlier, fearless. That's right. Uh, you know, in his younger days of, of jumping ramps and stuff. Well, he, they used to come over by the house and that, yeah, I mean, that open lot with their mountain yeah. bikes. And I'm telling you what, I could look out the window and I see heads. Did I'd you see, see when he destroyed his trek? Oh, know, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He completely bent the frame and everything. But So I did have that concern, yeah. especially once he stepped up to, you know, 114 LRS after putting 2,000 miles on that street uh, 750 um, was, all right, how, how much of a fool are you about to act now that I'm putting some throttle mm -hmm. underneath you? And But, you know, he's done well, and but well, he's also, you know, he's still under the rule that he has to be with us in a group. He's not out riding by himself. Even though he asks every day, he yeah. kind of takes a bike to school. But, um, I think there's just a maturity level there, and not to say that there aren't, and not that he would be wouldn't be fine. And there's a lot of young teenagers um, before they're 20 that probably do have the maturity, or maybe that's the only option of transportation they have. And I respect that. Um, but everybody everybody's different when there's they're coming up and, and their level of maturity and respect for the power. Mm -hmm. Back to your point of. There needs to be a respect for that power because yep. it is different. Well, and I'll say, even uh, having ridden now uh, a couple of years and several, several thousand miles, uh, there's something to be said for the smaller bike, the the new GS that I got, and I know it's the new shiny thing in the basement, but uh, <laughs> it's easier to maneuver. It's easier to get out of the garage. It's easier to to do everything that it does is going to be easier. When you left out the driveway the other day, let me tell you what I thought. You know, we've been talking. You've been trying to talk me into it. Yeah. I only thought of one thing. I could leave out of my driveway and hit that where that dip goes in where the drain is, and I wouldn't have to stop. I'm afraid the mufflers are going to drag. Yeah. I just popped right over that thing. That's, Dude, the, that's I, the only had, thing I thought about when you left the driveway. I head out of my driveway. <laughs> Uh, and you know, I, I got that little hill at the bottom of mine, and I just yeah. It, it just if I get in the grass, I get in the grass. <laughs> you know, if, if you when I ease out short, of mine, when I come up the driveway, I get but, it with a little more speed. I, I ain't worried about you know. Anyway, it's just an easier bike than my ultra limited or my road glide. So when I come down the stairs into the garage today, and I'm gonna ride and go get a sandwich for lunch, it's like. You know that I gotta walk that big heavy thing out and turn it around and crank it and let it. Oh my God! Is this where we're at? Yeah, right. We're on small island. Get on the GS. So what you've done is you've bought a BMW bar hopper. Is what you've done. I guess if you want to call it because it's not what we talk about bar hopping. But I mean, it's just an easy bike. Well, and and even to exaggerate that point and the points that we were making a minute ago. There's actually some uh, thought processes out there in the adventure world. That are, your GS is what a 1350, 1250, 1250. Yeah. Um, you know they make a smaller platform on they that, do. and and a lot of down to a 310. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I've heard some conversations that if they're actually using that adventure bike to be out off pavement trail riding, the preference is to be somewhere in that 850 ish yeah. range because. Yeah. It is more maneuverable. It's lighter weight. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you do need to walk it as without putting your feet down and, and you're, you know, you can do it. You, you it's easier to do yeah. and, and keep that throttle up and keep that balance and center of gravity. Um, whereas the 13 or the 1250 model, a little heavier, a little higher, a little high, higher CG, probably a little bit more for the actual adventure touring that involves more pavement or at least dirt more roads. More touring, sure. Yeah. Well, Kate, one, of Kate, one of the best uh, selling adventure bikes is the K, uh, KTM 8, 890, I think is mm -hmm. what it is. So it's in that line of what you're talking yeah. about. I mean, it's probably their 
I mean, I'd say their biggest seller. Sure. Well, I mean, it, and I mean, it fits that middle of the road kind of, you know, it's a little bigger than your, you know, what, who needs a light bike, but it's a little smaller than the bigger ones. So it falls right in that. Yeah. And my brother and I um, had that conversation, you know, he originally wanted it, but he couldn't talk to any of us to do it. Now that you've got one, he's kind of, it's stirring that conversation again, but he grew up riding dirt bikes. Yeah. So his mindset of an adventure bike is he wants to go over to Talladega National Forest and ride mm -hmm. with 601, 600 dash two, and all these mm -hmm. Bank, bankhead and all those places yeah, and all right? those places and he said you know I, I don't I don't I'm not looking for the 1250 I'm looking for that 750 800 cc range because That's, I want it to be a little bit more maneuverable yeah uh, and there there's a trade-off in in the adventure world you're either going to lean this way or lean that way if you're going to do more on-road touring I think that the thousand plus cc motor yeah. is where they're going and if you're going to be off-road more we want a little more horsepower a little less torque and uh, more uh, of the 800, 900 range. And I think mm -hmm. that's why the ADV world has kind of, uh, I don't know, was anxiously awaiting Harley's release of the 975 Pan America that hasn't come because everybody else got one. And apparently it's not going to. You know, KTM's got the 890. The, you can get the GS in a, uh, what, 850, I think. Uh, so they've got smaller platforms for those guys that are going to spend most of their time off-road or want the more off-road capable, and Harley hasn't released it yet. They're sticking with the 1250, and I haven't heard that they have any intentions of going down to the 975. Mm -hmm. Now, in the real world, I think a, a capable rider will take the 1250 farther than I certainly will be able to take it. but. Could I take an 890 farther than I could my 1250? Time will tell. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, we we got there. We're saying that's just an easy bike to ride, mm -hmm. and uh, I wouldn't discourage somebody from starting on that platform. Uh, sure. The the boxer is, is balanced. It's smooth. It's got a lower center of gravity than some of the other adventure bikes. Uh, it's been in production decades i mean it, it's pretty well refined i mean i think it's set the pace for all adventure bikes i mean, it, I mean it's yeah you know, so that was when when i decided that i wanted an adventure bike the bmw was was always kind of uh, i don't know i, I liked it uh, but when you, you start hearing the murmurings and it's you know the pan america comes out and they're comparing it to the gs everybody wants to use the gs as the measuring stick and i was like i'm yeah. just gonna buy the measuring stick <laughs> yeah that's better to do yeah. that but i think there's another option and i'm not real familiar you may know more about this but there's probably an intermediate step before you get into what we would consider a venture bike is that do they still have the what they used to call the dual tour mm -hmm. was basically yeah. just it's a dirt bike that has mirrors and turn signals right. you know and you can get that in a 250 you can. 500. I think you can get it up to a five. It used to be up to a 500 yeah. or a 450, something like that. Um, you know, that was the big thing when, when I rode was that, you know, we couldn't get on the road because we didn't have, you know, turn signals, you know, you had or mirrors. Um, so, um, uh, you know, the Navi tires was obviously you paid decent money back in those days for tires. And the last thing you wanted to do was, you know, um, you know, let the asphalt eat them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but the whole purpose that we owned dirt bikes was to get on the dirt. I mean, you know, it, for whatever reason, um, I can see, and I have since I've been back into the motorcycle world, uh, the the adventure world is is I would say, if you included the entire world, you know, all right, so everybody outside the U.S., it's as big or bigger than than the world that we live in every day with with our uh, you know um, adventure tour. I mean, the Grand Touring bikes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. It's enormous. Uh, we talked, DJ and I talked about that the other day. Um, you know, overseas is, I mean, they, they, they love them over there. The Harley world's growing in Australia and some of those countries. But uh, Germany and, uh, and, you know, having traveled over there, but Germany and all of Europe area over there, I mean, their they're adventure biking is huge. Yeah. Huge. Of course, so is the Vespa world, too. Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't talked about that. Yeah. But the Are you getting a Vespa? Uh, no, no, no. But a Grump. Hey, the, the what's the little Honda thing? Not the is it Grump. I think it's the is it the is, uh, the Grump and something else. But we saw a couple of those in uh, uh, where was we at the other day? I'm on rented one when we got out of Panama City. 
I mean, we're, we're that, all going rent. Yeah. We're all going rent Vespas. And big I keep wanting to say Gronk, um, but it's not that. A Grom. Grom. That's, Grom. that's, that's what Grom. it is. Yeah, Grom. yeah. I knew I had. I knew yeah. it was somewhere in there. It's not a scooter. Yeah. I mean, it's borderline pit bike, hit bike uh, yeah, slash. Pit bike. But I mean, everybody that I've talked well, to you know, that's ridden one, love them. Raves yeah. over how fun uh, they are. Well, yeah. you know, uh, uh, when I was a kid, and, and we used to go to the beach all the time. We lived in Florida. And our family, because it was my dad, his sisters and brothers, and we all just went to the beach about every weekend, Honda 50s. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had, you know, they didn't, they had wider tires to handle the sand, but they were knobby. Um, And, oh my God, they were so much fun. I've got pictures of me on the back of one with my dad, you know, several. But they were just so much fun. Just just little small. Have you seen Bill's? Did you see Bill's in the That's shop? where I saw it at. Jeremy the, and I went over there to groms. see it. He's got a Grom. They're like 70 horsepower. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, they will go. I mean, they will get it. You could take one of those Honda 50s and hit the, the dunes and the tires, those wide tires, and, man, they would lay down some sand and just up. I, I'm go. pretty sure they had a, uh, a little had ride at the dealership back last summer. And used to, if it was a a ride that the dealership kind of endorsed, they would send somebody from the shop on the ride. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure one of the mechanics went and got on one of his Groms and went off on this, you know, 100 bike (laughs) ride on a Grom. It was kind of funny seeing him take off. But, uh, yeah. There are are small bikes out there, and there's a progression uh, process in getting this done. Um, Just, you know, don't, don't be in a hurry to arrive where we sit today. You know, this is from years and years of experience and riding, and and um, you know we'll, we'll give our stories a little more in depth at some point or another. But yeah, we've it's been some bumps and bruises to get there. But if you'll listen to us and some other folks out there try to help you, um, I, I promise you we'll probably put you in a better place to uh, that we after you've been riding five to, to six years that you'll be um, a much more seasoned rider. I'm really glad that we had this conversation because you know in the early part of the episodes that we started with, we talked a lot about do your due diligence of modifying your bike. Well, I think that same principle applies yeah. to this conversation here, that if you're looking sure. at a motorcycle, do your due diligence because ultimately, whatever vision that you have of what style of riding you want to do, what size of bike you want to have, it's all for naught if you don't take into the safety factor. And I'd much rather you slowly, as a new rider, progress to what you want as opposed to having an accident that you never get any further. Right. Yeah. So starting off with that motorcycle safety foundation, starting whether your physical abilities, your size, your stature, put some limitations or opens doors for you, don't feel like you got to rush right to where you're the end point. Yeah. And I would say, you know, there's, there's bound to be some people out there that are going to listen to this podcast or, and have got it stuck in their head that there's this dogmatic world of if you don't ride a Harley Davidson, then you know you don't count or right. you know you right. can't hang out biker. here. You're not a real biker, right. and that, I believe that's so dated. And I've not been witness to that anywhere. Uh, we go to bike nights, we go to to restaurants, whatever, and there's all kinds of riders there. I would say if you're uh, if you want to get out and ride, pick the bike that you think fits you for the moment and go have a good time, right. and you'll be welcomed into that community. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, you know what? If you're not, it's not the people you wanted to be hanging around with anyway. Yeah, it's not you and the bike you chose. The vast majority of the people that I've met since I started motorcycling just love motorcycles. They like adventure bikes. They like sport bikes. They like Harleys. They want yep. to ride them all. Every motorcycle I see, I want to ride at some point in time. Yep. I want to feel that one and that one and that one and that one. Mm-hmm. I want to ride an Aprilia. I want to own a Ducati. I, all of it. So yeah. we, are, we are travelers, um, and uh, some of the information you'll learn about us, again, uh, as we progress along here. But uh, we have before gotten in a truck and been going all day on a Saturday just to go 300 miles away and look at bikes and dealerships. Um, and we have been known to go in uh, Indian dealerships. Mm-hmm. We go in Harley dealerships. Uh, we go into um, uh, power sports dealerships that sell everything. Um, we have one here in our uh, in our area that's um, um, I won't call the name, but they sell multiple different brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been there for bike night a couple times. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't the whole brand thing. I, I'm a Harley guy. I like Harleys. Will I own another brand? Probably I could and would, um, but it's not end-all be-all 
what's on the tank, the name, whatever it is. If it's got two wheels and you love it, enjoy it, go ride it. I agree. John, take us out of here. Appreciate you joining us. Um, hope you'll stick around for the next episode uh, and hit that subscribe button. Randy, you want to close us out with the details? Absolutely. Remember, we're not professionals. We are here for the fun and for the laughs. Um, so um, if you want to reach out to us on social media, you can get to us on uh, TikTok at, uh, let's see, I believe it is at RRShopTalk. Uh, Instagram is RR.ShopTalk. Facebook is Ragnar Rider Shop Talk, and the email address is rrshoptalk at gmail.com, and we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Love you guys. God bless. Till the next time.